If there was one profitable skill set in entrepreneurship, business, and marketing, I believe that this would be it. Understanding how to sell online begins with this one thing, and that's copywriting. How do you write persuasive copy on whether it's your sales letters, sales videos, ads? How do you communicate that message on all these different platforms? Because if you can do that, you're gonna realize it's gonna boost up your conversions, your sales, and we all know that ultimately, that just leads to better margins, and better revenue. So today in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the entire persuasion formula that I utilize in all these different platforms that has been responsible for well over $25 million in sales, selling our own products, and how you can utilize them on all these different platforms. And by the end of this video, if you stay to the end, you'll be able to have exact clarity on what you need to be doing every single time, whether you're gonna sell physical products, digital products, programs, software, services, you're gonna be able to plug and play these different elements as part of your sales process. Let's begin. So as first starting out, I'll always try to think about writing pieces of copy from scratch. Whether it's an ad, whether it's a sales video, whether it's a piece of sales letter, the script, I'll be like, so where should I begin? So how you'll be able to utilize this entire framework is think of it as kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. The only difference is this jigsaw puzzle only has four pieces. And it begins with this first element. And to explain to you what this first element is, there's a reason why I'm here in this room right now, to hopefully help you apply this first element a whole lot better. Now, I'd like you to think about your favorite superhero movie of all time. Just think about that for a second. Okay. Now, chances are, if I'm trying to read your mind right now, you would have either said Iron Man or Superman or Batman, right? Probably, right? 80% of the time, right? For most people. Now, whatever it is that you picked, right? It could be something else, right? It could be a D-grade superhero. But whatever it is that you picked, I'd like you to think about why you picked that movie. Now, chances are, if you picked that movie, it was because there was a pretty amazing villain in that movie as well. Now I think about it, who was the villain in that movie? And why did that villain make that movie great? I mean, just think about it. If Clark Kent, Superman, worked in the world where there was no crime, what would he be doing? He would be wearing specs, there was no crime to solve, there's no people robbing banks, there's no kryptonite. What do you think Clark Kent would be doing? He would be literally working as a reporter in I can't remember what the company name was, but he would just be working there on a daily basis. Can you imagine how boring the movie would be? What about Batman? Can you imagine if Batman had nobody to fight? There was no Joker, there's no Penguin. What would he be? He would be just this weird dude in a suit driving a Batmobile. It would still be pretty cool, right? But that would be pretty much it, right? It would be a pretty boring movie, right? Same thing with Iron Man, right? If there was no, like, there was no evil, there was, there was nothing, there was no terrorists, he would be just a billionaire philanthropist, which you know, I guess may maybe, right, that would be a pretty interesting movie, but it will be not like what it is today. So my point and point I'm trying to make is that your offer, the thing that you wanna sell, which is your hero, which is gonna be positioned as your hero eventually, is only going to be celebrated and appreciated if you have this first element. Now, what is that? That's the problem. What's the problem? The problem is the villain, right? The more, th so what you wanna be able to do is to be able to identify who this villain is, which is the problem, right? Based on their struggle, based on their current circumstances, based on the roadblocks your audience might have, because the better you can identify this villain, and better yet, if you can make this villain a lot more scary than it looks, you wanna give it big teeth, right? You think about all the villains, why are they amazing villains? Is because when the villain's amazing, that is when the hero can shine. So in the context of this, whether you wanna sell that product, program, service, physical product, digital product. The first thing you gotta do is you wanna have, number one, is an urgent problem. Not just a problem, but an urgent problem, right? Why is this a problem now, right? So think about what is that problem for your audience? And sometimes problems could be based upon their frustration, right? It could be based upon painting a specific scenario. So there's, before I go on to number two, right? I wanna be able to have depth to each different component. So when it comes to urgent problem, usually 
when I ask somebody, so what's the problem your audience face? A typical answer would be, well, they say they have no money, they have no time, they're too young to do this, too old, too old to do this, they don't have confidence. And it's usually a very surface level description. Now, what is gonna make good persuasive copy if there is depth and if you can paint the exact scenario? So what would that exact scenario look like? So for example, if I wanted to create an offer which is on a service as an agency helping people run ads, an amateur way to identify problems would be like, is your Facebook ads losing money, right? Yeah, it's identifying a problem, but it doesn't have the depth. And when you don't have depth and there's no specificity, it's not gonna be relatable as well. So a much better way would be, have you ever experienced logging on to your Facebook ad account only to notice that it was suspended yet again? And now you breathe this heavy sigh, knowing very well you gotta repeat the entire process again and allow and, and create a brand new account under somebody else's name in your family, right? And you ask yourself, what did I do wrong again? Now, if you did that, right? If I was speaking to my the right audience, here's what you want your audience to be feeling. You want them to be nodding in agreement with you. You want them to be reading your copy, that sales letter, sales page, ad, and they're nodding in agreement, saying to themselves, yes, this person understands me, okay? That is how you describe the urgent problem, where number one, you think about the words that's associated to the problem, right, that frustration, and then you try to be specific with an exact scenario. So how can you do that? Think about being descriptive. So the way you can do that is the, 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 the next element under problem, urgent problem, is to think about the emotion that is associated to it. So this would be what an emotion is both the negative and positive, right? So when it comes to identifying the emotion, what is that? Is that frustration? Is it fear? Is it anger? Is it a feeling of being lost? Hopelessness? What would that negative emotion be, right? Think about starting off by associating that emotion with the problem or the struggle or the obstacle because now in your audience's mind, that is now how they are painting this villain, right? Remember, no villain, no hero, right? Your offer is not gonna be seen or positioned or celebrated if the audience doesn't see what is the problem, struggle, or what the evil villain is doing. So that's how you begin the conversation. Right now, there's an urgent problem in when it comes to niche thing, when it comes to investing in property, when it comes to real estate, when it comes to what is that problem? That brings us to number two. Okay, number two is unique solution. Now, not all solutions might be unique, but the more you can make it unique, the better your offer conversion is gonna be when you come to a call to action. So let's talk about what number two is, unique solution. So when I say unique solution, I wanna be clear about one thing. Unique solution is not your product. So many times what amateur marketers do is they have an urgent problem, right? They talk about a problem, or worse yet, they might not even mention what the problem is, and they go straight into selling the product, right? Which is like, amazing product for sale, you know, 52% um, off, valid now, while stocks last, hurry, buy now, before it's too late, right? Th those are amateur copy. Well, what you wanna be able to do is you wanna be able to have a solution, but to understand that the solution is not your product, right? Think of it as kind of like what good copy does, Think of it as kind of like being a doctor. What does a doctor do? A doctor wants to sell you drugs. Now, the last time you visited your doctor and the last time a doctor sold you drugs, what do you think you did? When a doctor said, here, have this pack of medicine, in most cases, you didn't question. What did you say? You said, okay, right? And you just took it on surface level. Why? Because a doctor isn't selling you drugs. A doctor, what is he doing is he's, well, prescribing you drugs. A doctor looked, diagnosed your problem, right? Took up a stethoscope, right? Listened to your heartbeat, asked you to put out your tongue, diagnosed the problem and said, based on this thing, right? You have this thing that's going on, right? They diagnosed the problem. And when it comes to marketing and sales and copy and persuasion, it's the same thing. You don't jump straight to your product. Can you imagine, if you went to the doctor and say, doctor, I'm feeling a little bit right? Doctor, I don't know, but there seems to be this thing, my right? Can you imagine that was a conversation? 
it would be a little bit weird, don't you think? Right, so in other words, what you wanna be able to do is, as a copywriter, is when it comes to writing persuasive copy, right, is to be able to come from an angle of diagnose, which is you've identified the problem, and based on that problem, this is the solution. The solution is not your product. The solution is this thing, this mechanism that they need to be doing, okay? So for example, based on that early example, it would be a doctor looking at that thing, and the doctor saying, well, based on what's happening, it looks like you wanna be able to boost your level of immunity up in your body, right? So notice what I'm saying, that's the solution. I'm not, I'm not pushing the product just yet, right? So you could be selling a physical product. The physical product, if it's, let's say, um, a golf club, right? It would be, so if you wanna be able to improve your golf swing, a common problem that golfers usually have is they swing the ball, maybe the ball goes, or rather swing the club, the ball goes to the right and then goes to the left, right? So the solution to that would be to have, whatever, a, a better posture to make sure that, uh, or your grip, whatever it might be, okay? So right now you're educating them in terms of diagnosing what's the root cause of the problem that's causing them, you know, to either not to drive the ball as far as they like, or that's causing the ball going from right to left. Right, solution problem. So solution problem would be, um, right now if you are knocking on doors, cold calling, approaching friends and family to get more leads, okay? Chances are the solution to scale your business to get more sales is to be able to have a sales process online. So notice the difference between solution that is not your product, right? The solution is the mechanism. You could be selling beauty products, right? That is for skincare or you're selling like face toner, right so what do you do you identify the problem right now the problem is if you're getting breakouts acne chances are it is because your pores are open after you wash your face and that's when bacteria is most is, is able to get in and that's when your skin is most prone to bacteria right so what's the solution to that the solution is to make sure that your pores are closed so that bacteria can't come in Right, so notice now, I'm not, I'm, not set straight, I'm not going straight into, hey, amazing face toner for sale, right? I'm coming from an angle the same way a doctor would prescribe drugs. So that's right, this, this video is literally teaching you how to sell drugs, okay? Uh, if you come from an angle, that's how you do it well. So that's number two, right? Number one, start off with urgent problem. Number two, unique solution. The more unique the solution is, the better it's gonna be. And now number three is, in fact, before I tell you what number three is, I'm gonna tell you a little story so they can remember what number three is. You see, there was a point in time when lifts, elevators did not exist until one guy, Elisha Otis, who literally invented lifts, came up with this mechanism, this magical mechanism that could help transport people up and down the building. Now, initially, when this thing was new, everybody was skeptical. And the thing that they were really skeptical about is, well, what if this flimsy rope breaks? What if it snaps? Does this mean that if this is a 17-story building, this entire device is gonna go crashing 17 floors down? So Elisha Otis of, you know, the Otis machinery said, no, 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 that, that's, not, that's not how it works, right? But, but obviously people would not take what he's saying at surface level. So one of the things that he did was he said, to prove to you guys that this thing works, I am going to step into this lift and we are gonna cut off the ropes that is supporting this so that you guys can see what would happen in the event if this thing snaps. To prove that the mechanism, this fail-safe device actually works. And everybody was like in shock, like what's gonna happen? And when he demonstrated that even when that thing breaks, the lift, doesn't just go crashing down, but very safely just moves down. Now that is what number three is. Number three is unquestionable proof. That's a third segment. This is where you wanna be able to either demonstrate or utilize social proof or testimonials or case studies to show that your thing works. Right? Unquestionable proof. How can you, not just by telling your audience, but showing them either by actually doing it or by showing a client that did it or have some sort of unquestionable proof, right? Very similar to like when, was it Tesla? When they wanted to show that it was bulletproof or something, right? 
It would be amazing if Elon Musk sat, sat inside the car, and maybe he did, I can't remember, right? And somebody would take out like a machine gun or an AK-47. Now obviously, <laughs> the stakes would be very high, right? And just go spraying the bullets through this Tesla mobile, right? That's what I mean by unquestionable proof. The better you can do this through demonstration, through case study, through testimonial, to prove to your audience that your stuff works, the better your conversion is gonna be. And that brings us to number four. Only then can you move on to your offer, your product, your program, your service, your done for you, your consulting, which is through number four, a user-friendly proposition. So what is a user-friendly proposition? This is when you're gonna walk your audience through your thing, your offer, which is showing them the experience of what's gonna happen when they use that product. How can you turn the experience? Maybe it would be like, you're gonna get these five things. You're gonna get these seven modules. We're gonna put you through four weeks of training. Here's what week one looks like, right? It's a user-friendly proposition. And when you're able to do that, that is when you've successfully educated your audience from not knowing, maybe not even being aware of your problem, to being problem aware, to solution aware, to being aware of your product and how your product is genuinely gonna help them. Now, when you do this well, notice that, remember, this is a framework. You'll be able to utilize this way of thinking through your ads, through your sales videos, through your scripts. And that's pretty much it. Um, if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below, number one, what your biggest takeaway is. And as always, smash the like button for YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel if you wanna be able to be notified for more videos just like this. And if you truly wanna be get, if you truly wanna get good at selling online, be sure to binge watch this entire playlist that's gonna appear in front of your face in about five seconds from now. Here we go, five, four, three, two.